Because we never, I never I know when we're actually going to start. Going now. No. <laughs> but, but look who I'm, okay, hi, I'm look. Vicki Abelson, and this is The Road Taken, and look who's here. Hi. It's Kathleen Rose Perkins. Okay, is The Rose because there was another Kathleen Perkins? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So people don't really call you Kathleen Rose. Nobody, yeah. Okay, nobody. nobody does. Okay, because I'm. My was, partner calls me Rose, but it just because he has, he likes to, but um, yeah, it's. Kathleen Rose. That's a very old-fashioned name, Rose. Rose. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Sweet. I, I think of like Gypsy Rose Lee. It's like kind of an old-fashioned. It is sweet. Yeah. It's yeah. nice to be different. You've like been it. with your partner like a, a million years. Five so, million years. So that's, <laughs> but that's, but that's really sweet. All right, I'm going here because this is the way we're going to be able to see like who's watching with us so that I can say who's hi to people. Who's watching? I, so we'll, we'll see who, who pops up on here. Okay, so I'm going to tell you quickly the story that I just told Kathleen, but like two months ago, I was not aware of you. I mean, I'd seen Gone Girl. I'd seen you in, in a number of things, the James Gandolfini, Julia Louis Dreyfus movie. How which is, great was that? Oh my movie? God, so and that beautiful. Said, if you haven't seen it, go so, see it. So beautiful. Such a great movie. A great movie. And she is a dynamo. Julia did you Louis. work with her on no, that? Not no. Well, uh, we were at a we were at a, a a table in a restaurant with a million other people. So I guess technically I did. Um, but I didn't work j just right, me and right. her together. Um, but you know that was enough for me to be able to sit at the same table as Julia Louis Dreyfus and it's pretty crazy. And just look at her. <laughs> and, and you have that whole you have you have not a dissimilar vibe about you. Okay, so so um, no I'm, no I'm serious. Okay, so so my awareness of Kathleen. Okay, so she's done till death. Which okay, so we have we have yeah. two degrees all over the place because Brad Garrett. Was Lovely in Everybody guy. Loves Raymond, mm -hmm. and Phil Rosenthal is a good friend of mine, and I get to go to his movie nights on Sunday. I was just there on Sunday, oh, and so fantastic he's fantastic. Too. And then also, um, did you see him? What? The documentary about him bringing Everybody Loves Exporting Raymond. Exporting Raymond. I mean, <laughs> yes. Have you seen his food show? Somebody feed Phil. I haven't yet, okay. but. I Fantastic. just saw that I got a screener in the mail, so I check saw it out. That. I didn't it's, even know that it existed. It's but fantastic. You know, because he was really into. He's really into food. He's really into food, but he also brings his comedic sensibility That's and great. then his warmth and his pathos. And so the shows are hysterically funny. Oh, awesome. They're loving, and then you also get to see all this great food. But it, they're great. really wonderful. Oh, cool. Um, and so then also Gary, I'm married. I've known Jay Moore <laughs> since he was a kid. Since he was yeah. like, he always. Forgets that he knows me, but yes, I know, <laughs> I know him since he was like 18 and just starting out. He's funny. He's, He's a really funny dude. He is. I'm sad that that show didn't keep going because I thought it was a great show and he was great on it. And I liked working on it. And, and now you're working on something called American Housewife, yeah? You yes, just yeah. yeah. And, and what's that like? Well, I play. Uh, I played this past season, which was their second season, I believe. Mm -hmm. I played a really crazy person. Well, not a crazy <laughs> person. She just basically had a um, <laughs> midlife crisis slash uh, mental breakdown. Nice. Yeah. So that's <laughs> fun. And so I had oh at God. one scene, I had two socks that were taped over my hand so that I couldn't scratch myself <laughs> while I was sleeping. So there's just like she just was. Uh, but but towards the end of the season, I got to redeem myself and and uh, and she kind of hands is quite yeah she she's uh, she's getting back she's getting back out there she's gonna you know <laughs> she's gonna be okay old Stacy Klauser <laughs> you you're good with playing the crazy I um, love so, playing crazy. okay so okay so the way that I found Kathleen is about a month ago my stylist Craig Ames um, I was looking for something to binge and. He works on, um, I, why did I just... Man with a Plan. Thank you, on Man with a Plan. Yeah. And so he said, have you seen episodes? And I was like, no. And I was like really cynical because I had heard that like Matt LeBlanc makes fun of himself and I'm thinking, oh, that's just probably silly. Yeah. Even yeah. though I love Matt LeBlanc, I thought, mm -hmm. okay, that's just probably silly. And he said, no, it's about writers. You're going to love this show. And I'm telling you, I You're started... You're a writer. I started that show, I think it was about 11 o'clock at night. I stayed up the entire night. <laughs> I binged the whole first season. That's and it's great. easy to binge because they're short, yeah. right? So binge the whole first season. I literally did not leave my house for like five days. I watched the entire season. And I fell so in love with Carol, yeah. Kathleen's character, that... She's a sweet... She's a little... Bless her heart. No, she's, she's a real broken... 
<laughs> okay, so I mean, like, I feel like we have to go back and talk about your, but we have to talk about Carol first because. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? That's I'm, I love that you you found it first of all, and Netflix. I have to say they're the best. It's been amazing that it's been on because uh, it, you know, originally it only was uh, uh, aired on Showtime, which is right. a lovely channel, but it's a pay channel mm -hmm. that a lot of people just didn't have. Right. So which I years, did, but I still didn't watch it, which is crazy. Oh well, then what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. I really didn't know. You guys did not and get enough. That's the great thing about Netflix too is the, is the binge uh, Absolutely. factor. Um, Absolutely. I just that really makes a difference because you can say, okay, well, I'm not into the first episode, but maybe I'll be into the second episode, and it's right there. That's right. When it was on Showtime, you'd have to wait another week, and if you weren't into the first episode or into the second or in the, th the, the third, like maybe it's a slow burn and it takes a couple episodes. I did not find it to be so, though. No, I found no. it like immediate jump in. First of all, John Pankow, I I, from Mad About You, I'm yeah. just obsessed with them. And he's he is so dynamic as Merck. The, the, that is such the, a crazy the character. First, uh, president of the um, of the network. Kathleen sleeps with, well, Carol sleeps <laughs> with all of her bosses. I'm not going to say Kathleen Thank did. You. I don't know. Thank but you. I'm going to say that Carol has, well, see, I'm giving You're it up. Never I'm find doing spoilers. Out who but, Kathleen slept <laughs> But I, see, I just gave a spoiler. Louise started watching it, but she sleeps with all yes. of her bosses. She's Mouth in total game. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, she's just, and, and it gets really interesting what happens as the seasons go on. Yeah. Um, the great thing is that the, the writers of the show are two gay men. So, uh, you know I didn't sleep around to get that job. <laughs> Do you know? Do we know? Uh, we do don't we know. know. Not in this business. <laughs> never know anything goes but I didn't I auditioned for it and got it okay so so we, all right so we have to we're gonna go back so that we right. can come to episodes current 10 so so you're a little girl you grow up in Michigan yeah and when do you know you what's the first thing you want to be when you grow up oh well at first I wanted to be the CEO of a major corporation that is strange <laughs> no I really like that ambition I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you to like cheat to them because you're too gorgeous to be looking at me, so you have to cheat to the camera. I never, okay. I spend the entire show like looking she's, this way. She yeah. is, she's gorgeous. Meanwhile, last night I watched I, you getting your hair done. I swear oh, to God, yeah. you know the internet is crazy. So also, the person who did my hair on that like makeover mm -hmm. is Luke Anthony. He he uh, was the um, he created all the hairstyles for episodes. Hair. So he did everyone's hair. Your, on hair your, your hair was the best in, in all he of that. He did a great Fantastic. job putting that together. All right, I have to give a plug to my hairdresser, uh, Nicole Vanables of the Ruby Begonia Salon. She's I in Studio it. City. She's but you have him. She's fantastic. She has these fabulous products that are available on the Ruby Begonia at the salon and also at friendsbeautysupply.com. Um, and Nicole is fantastic. I love her, and I just noticed Nicole, that. Nicole, that's where the money is. Product. <laughs> <laughs> she she does all these TV shows and everything, and she she was like one Brilliant. huge star's personal, which I won't say who it was, but somebody beyond a list, like a plus list. She was a personal, Jennifer. no, Jennifer. like a guy. I can't say because I don't know if it's Let's I'm allowed keep, to say. Does he have great he hair? Has, he has amazing hair, and it's because of her. Hair. And then also <laughs> our printer Rick Smokey of Quick Impressions. Um, you know, I'm putting these the, the commercials That's in the great. middle because. Facebook is doing something weird. They took all my videos down because I I talked about a new product that um, was sponsoring, and they think that I'm making money on Facebook, so therefore they're gonna make my videos hard to find. But anyway, but I uh, you know we can still we Facebook is going through a lot right they, now. They just need to kind of cut in a little slack. I know they have like just, a whole China problem now. Rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I can't imagine being in the Facebook well, wait, offices I don't really right now. I understand that because if you have a podcast, you're supposed to find sponsors. Not if you're doing it live on Facebook. Why? Because yeah. they don't want. Because I then I should be buying ads. 
They want me to be buying ads on Facebook. They don't want me to be making money on Facebook and Facebook not making money from it. But what Facebook, are they trust me, it's this whole other barter deal. There's no, yeah. Um, it's all about money. All but it is. It's money. all about money. So, all right. So, yeah. so, so, I, yeah, I watched you get, so it's because it's the internet. <laughs> I'm like watching this entire video. Yeah. And then at the end, I loved it because you ended up with a fabulous hairdo, but the bangs were really long and they were totally in your eyes. And yeah. I was like, okay. Like but then I noticed the last, the last shot, he had trimmed them down because yeah. they were totally in your eyes. Yeah. They were he gorgeous. Does, he gives good bang. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just came up with that saying. <laughs> that was good. And is he local? It looked like you were in he his is, apartment. Yeah. yeah, he's in West Hollywood. Are you in his apartment? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. he takes clients? Yeah. Okay, so say his name again. Luke Anthony. Okay. And I follow him on Twitter, so there's ways to get okay. to find him. Because he's great, too. Not as great as Nicole Venables, but he's wonderful. He's as if you're in the WeHo area. Yeah, there you go. And she's here in Studio City. But you were also red, sort of reddish in that. It looked like it was red in the, that he made you kind of a redhead, no? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because I she's just, looking at me like I'm making. I just got up. my hair done yeah. by him yesterday. Okay, too. so now it's and back we went to a blonde. little bit more coppery blonde. Yeah. 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 I'd like to kind of change it up. <laughs> so, but now, what do you do when you're doing a show like episodes and you have to maintain a look? You can't mess around with your own hair. No, there's no, no messing around. There's no messing no. around. No. No. Then you stay. No. And the, and, and the great thing about episodes, or I don't know if it's a great thing, but all five seasons were shot <laughs> over the course of, and that's 41 episodes in total, was over the course of six years. Uh, so we, and, so but. So does that come to, wait, I'm, I'm figuring the, it in out. In real so, time, yeah. but in the TV show time, it really only spanned maybe a year. Mm -hmm. So from day one, we needed to look exactly like the way we looked uh, by oh. the last day. Um, and no, all five seasons was one year. No, yeah, it really pretty much. Yeah, it all those, yeah, all, well, studio maybe they certainly year turn and over a half, lot. maybe 18 months. Well, they oh, do, oh, they, yes, do. they do, yeah, yeah, yes. I yes. get over the course of five seasons, I get three, three bosses in total. Um, and she slept with all of them, yeah. <laughs> all right, so and one was not a guy. But that's beside the point. Okay, that's so, season four. Ninja. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so so you're a little girl. You want to be a CEO? Now, I, I see. Now I like that aspiration for because, like a second, and then I took well, a marketing why? class in high school and was like, "This is boring." So, okay. but and why found, did you want to do that? What what attracted you to that? I like the idea of a woman being in that position. I love that. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? It was kind of, I was a feminist well before I even knew I was one. I love that. I just wanted to be powerful. I wanted to have power. Okay, now were you encouraged? <laughs> and then I, I became an actress. <laughs> oh. Why would that? Yeah, but now you're right. You're creating your own projects. We'll get to that. There's, okay. a, there's, a, way, yeah. there's a way to... Look. There's power. I'm going to find it if it kills me. I just went to a <laughs> panel of Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin over the uh, and talk you, about you know, power. I want to talk about women who have created their own power. I mean, Jane Fonda. She's, I didn't know what she had done, but she was the nine to five that she produced that, that she like got Dolly Parton and Lily Tomlin on board. Mm -hmm. that, uh, I listened to them do, uh, I listened to Howard Stern, which I'm a big fan of. I his. just watched him last night on the David Letterman thing. Have you seen that yet? No, I haven't. You can watch it on Netflix also. But yeah, <laughs> Dave does one of his <laughs> it's like things a plug like Netflix. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I bought the stock. I'm it's not stupid. It's supposed to be great. Did you? I did. Smartest I bought it like ever. six. I bought it like six months ago for one hundred and sixty-three dollars. It's now up to three sixty-three. Yeah. You are rich. No, yeah. No. You're gonna but be I didn't rich. buy enough of it. But 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 Netflix <laughs> is is happening. Yeah. It's yes. where it's at. It is. It's where it's at. So wait, Howard Stern. How did you get to Howard Stern? What were you oh, saying? Oh, so he was. He did an interview with Jane Fonda. Jane and went on Howard. Both of them did, yeah, and That's it was so a great believe. interview. Wow. And um, I mean, That's he gets funny. everyone these days because he's a really lovely and he's, he's gone more mainstream. And he's, he's very thorough and a really mm -hmm. good interviewer. Yes, he and, is. Um, uh, yeah, she. I just didn't know all the things she had done She's until amazing. I listened to that uh, interview. And what an incredible woman! And let me tell you what she looks like in person. It's 
unfathomable. Yeah. How old she is. It's unfathomable. She's like in how her. How old is she? She's 80. Oh, wow. She or looks some, amazing. She's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. It's crazy. I mean, she's had help, but I don't care. Her on Golden Pond, mm -hmm. it, I mean, that movie is, uh, she's fantastic. Okay, you're movie. really young, but there was a movie called Clute. Um, yeah. Do you know about Clute? Uh, I only saw pieces of okay, it. Okay, because she's, I know she it. had the best hairdo, and I've been trying to get that hairdo it's for a like four years. She always rocks it's a, a sh great shag. It's the shag. <laughs> and in fact, Lily Tomlin went. We're bringing the shag back. <laughs> this, oh, are you kidding? I don't know. Well, that's yeah, right? what I go that's, for every time. Shag. I'm like, shag me out, shag me out. I want the Clute. I'm still 40 years later saying, give me the Clute. Give me the Clute. But Clute. Lily Tomlin um, on Saturday was saying that the. the the announcer was the moderator was saying you guys met like 40 years ago and, and Lily said oh I knew about Jane before that I was rocking a clute shag so even <laughs> Lily was rocking the clute shag that's where oh, it crack me up oh my god all right so so you wanted to be a CEO because yeah. now did your parents support your feminism like yeah well, my you mom had, you had brothers my so. mom was all about that and uh the great thing about my parents, mm -hmm. no matter what we wanted to do, they were they were supportive, but they weren't. They didn't. It wasn't about like well, uh, so financial support. Although they were very financially mm -hmm. supportive, mm -hmm. but to to a limit because they just had to yeah. be. They're middle class. My and dad was a teacher, and my mom was a social worker. What so kind of teacher was your dad? I was a phys ed teacher mm -hmm. at our local high school, and he was also a coach. So all four of my brothers had him as either a coach or a teacher. Oh wow! Um, I I didn't because I ran. I did. I ran track and did, played volleyball, and my dad only coached baseball and um, and football and uh, basketball. So you never had him as a PE teacher. I didn't yeah. have him as a PE teacher either, but um, but he was he was one of those great teachers in that he loved singing and he loved uh, dancing and you know just not as a teacher but just mm -hmm. as like he was really into the arts. Mm -hmm. So even in our high school, he introduced a unit of every freshman had to take a phys ed uh, a year of phys ed. Mm -hmm. It was a requirement mm -hmm. at the time, and he infused a unit of social dance. Um, it, so everyone who went to school under the tutelage of my father during you know the 43 years that he taught um, had to learn how to foxtrot and jitterbug. Oh my god! Yeah. I love it. I wish I would have had. I hated PE. We were doing horrible things. Well, you do everything. You do a basketball unit. You do a volleyball unit. But you do all day. that stuff. So the girls and the boys had PE together. Yes. Oh and my we, god. And we had to. Learn and those that. outfits. Yeah. No, no. No. We didn't. We there was. It wasn't one of the schools where you had a like a, a uniform. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a public school. Well, I went to public school, but no. Did no, you have no. to wear a gym at no. a PE outfit? You just bring shorts. You bring your own, like. The wow, Louise, yeah. we had PE. Didn't you have PE outfits? It was <laughs> horrific. <laughs> my was a little blue onesie. Yes, my what? little blue shorts. onesie. It's a blue onesie. It's up to here. It's the most. Nobody looks good in this With thing. With a little Peter Pan. Yeah. Color. Oh, it I was snaps. Want that now that it's, sounds fun. Oh, oh. <laughs> you you could rock that look. But let me tell you, nobody else could. It Peter was Pan horrible. <laughs> oh, it was so awful. It was awful. And wow. so if we would have been in there with the boys, I would have Social never, I dancing in a oh my onesie? God. I, would, I, I, I would have never come out of the, the locker room. No. Oh no, my. we could wear whatever. And that was the great thing about that unit is that we didn't have to change into sports clothes because we weren't really sweating very much. So that whole month where we were learning social dance, you could just wear whatever you wanted to wear. And so did you really learn how to do we the dance? We were all 13, 14-year-olds like mm -hmm. being taught like boys were to being touched this is how you ask the lady to dance and if she mm -hmm. says and the no you weren't allowed to say no which mm -hmm. i think is really smart mm -hmm. because there was no re uh, 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 rejection yes were you allowed to make a face because that's what happened to me <laughs> there <was> lots <laughs> of face making dancing. lots of face making Dose and do your corner and <laughs> someone would make a face and i would be devastated <laughs> Spin your partner yeah. <laughs> away from you. <laughs> 
No, yeah, and then at the end of that unit, it was always butting up against the Christmas break, and so we would have a big uh, dance? A dance, oh. dance contest mm -hmm. at our local high school, and every one of my brothers and I entered the dance contest and either placed or won every year that we we um, competed. So, you so did you fall brother? What? You would dance with your brother? No, I don't know. Because oh, okay. I was, like, I'm the younger sister, so my mm -hmm. brother was like, you're so dumb, no way, I'm not dancing with you. And did your father, like, tutor you guys at home, so, like, you really knew how to do the dances? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had the inside skin. We had the skin, like, we were, I remember being really young when my eldest and my second eldest were seniors and, a senior and a junior. Mm -hmm. and Are they you all were, really close in age? Seven years apart. Okay. Uh, so there's five of us, and there's like, so every two years, my mom was pregnant. Wow. She was busy. Yeah. Uh, so, but they were competing, and I, so I must have been 10 when mm -hmm. they were 17 and 16. They were competing, and I remember their partners would come over so that they could get tutelage from my brother, from my dad, oh. in the off hours, which is so unfair because that's like, <laughs> they got, and they both won. They oh got first and second God. place. But I remember dancing uh, and doing the twist. I remember standing on the pool table, twisting while all my brothers and their partners and my dad and my mom, and, oh. and they were all dancing around in that part where in Chubby Checkers, the, when, when he says, you should see my little sis. Uh. Jimmy, like, no, was kind of, my brother would always point to me. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Because I so oh. looked up to him. Oh. It was like the best family memory ever. Oh, that's such a, that's yeah. so sweet. And so do you still know how to foxtrot and do all that stuff? Everything, yeah. Oh. Every, I think every single person who went through that still knows how to do that. Wow. I love that. Which that's... I think is, is, it's lost on, nobody knows how to social dance no. these days. And I think that's a brilliant thing to know. How Fantastic. to just to move around. In a so did your father come up with this? Because Did he and your mother dance? Like, was that part yeah. of their? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They loved to dance together, and mm -hmm. they were really good dance partners. Unfortunately, they weren't great <laughs> life partners. <laughs> My parents, too. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. What happens? It's, 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 it's something that happens. But, um, but yeah, they were, they were really good dance partners, and they danced all the time together, and it was fun to watch them dance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you wanted to be a CEO. But that's all that to say is like once I started getting into the arts and singing so and you dancing had and that. acting, my dad was so behind me. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, do what you want. Be, be your own woman. Do what makes you happy. That's and very unusual, by yeah. the way. Yeah. That, that's a gift. That a doesn't always happen. Big gift, yeah. especially in this business because it's a really hard business to do anything in. So when did that shift happen for you? When did you make that decision that you wanted to be in showbiz? Right, uh, the business of show. <laughs> I uh, I just wrote that in an article in the, the editor. Of show. The, I, I wrote um, the biz of show, and she capitalized the S and the B, and I was like, no, I don't think no, no, so. No, 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 right? No, no, no. no I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Doesn't deserve your capitalization. No. Okay. So, so freshman when, year of high school, I started doing the theater program in the high school and was like just completely hooked. And so, did you? Was it musicals right from the start? Well, at the, I was scared to audition for the musical mm -hmm. because mm, singing in front of people makes me incredibly nervous. Mm -hmm. It always has, and. Now it would it would be impossible for me to be able to sing in front of a bunch of. When was the last time you sang in front of? Oh. I, don't even, <laughs> I don't even know. I really? don't even know. It's such a. Um, so what are some of the musicals oh, that you no, did? Oh no! What am wow. I talking okay. about? I I sang in a in a uh, an ensemble though, but to okay. sing like a solo in yeah. front of people would be really hard for me. For uh, I do a Christmas pageant. Oh. Harry Shearer puts on yeah. this like charity pageant down um, at Largo, I think, mm -hmm. is where he puts it on every year. And, and his there's wife a choral is, group. Uh, what's his wife's name? Um, um, uh, Judith. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Michael Higgins. Uh, oh, I love Michael Higgins. Yeah, he's a good friend of ours. He played Letterman. Yes, yes, he did, yeah, and he's brilliant. He's a yes. brilliant actor, but he's mm -hmm. also a really great um, singer and uh, kind of... Um, I did not know that. C composer or uh, oh, wow. he kind of he just he puts he arranges mm -hmm. choral music 
So every year, we I am a part of this group oh, of sweet. choral singers uh, that he kind of directs and stuff. For, for that um, particular charity program. But nice. Yeah. Okay, so so what musicals did you do when you were in high school? Did you do musicals? Well, my big one was I was Kathy Selden in um, uh, Singing in the Rain. Wow. And we did the original, we did the actual choreography from the movie. So we took oh, the, tip the, um, the thing over, the, the couch. Whoa. <laughs> it was a big time for Kalamazoo Civic Theater. <laughs> wow, that's huge. Yeah, it was fun. So it was Debbie really Ryan. fun. Debbie Ryan. Yeah. I got, to, I got to see Debbie uh, when her book came out a few years ago. She did the LA Book Fair. Yeah. And she was... I, I, I talk about Paula Poundstone, who was our guest recently, as being yeah, the funniest person who's amazing. ever lived. But right up with Paula was Debbie Reynolds. She was so funny. I, and, and quick and, and filthy. <laughs> filthy. Like, she was my kind of girl. She was body. She looked right at me. She pegged me. She was cursing our ass off. She was hysterical. She was hysterical. But that part, oh my God. God. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Wow, your that father must have been musical very proud of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, um, the whole family came out to see it. Mm -hmm. I also played Juliet in Romeo and Juliet, nice. which was one of my favorite parts I'd ever played. And my whole family came to see that too. So there were just like these these certain productions that everybody came they to see. They didn't come to the if, the other ones. You know what? I think actually two of my brothers have never seen an episode of episodes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't think that they've seen it. Okay, that's just crazy, <laughs> right? That is just. What do you? What do you? What do your parents think of that? Of episodes? They love it. Love it. They that wasn't hard for them to watch because because Kathleen does some. You do some stuff. The, yeah, they're a little. They're not. They're not really conservative people, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a, it's it's very jarring to see your yeah, dad I mean, do that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's sex and there's yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, they kind of get over it because they've That's seen so it great. enough. That's they've seen so it. great. And I know when to tell them. I you know not I, to watch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know when to tell them to speed through or I you know and I tell my brothers too because they can't watch that kind of stuff at all it just uh, makes them really it's so uncomfortable and yeah. I get it cause yeah yeah at one point in my 20s I was like what's the big deal it's not no big deal and then and then I just had the thought what if I had to watch my brothers simulate sex on a tv and then I went oh no <laughs> No. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. So, um, so y y so I know when to tell them to skip over okay, or to wise. fast forward. Or but I like that they're support. I, except for those other two brothers. Get with it. They're, what the? They're very supportive, but they just didn't, never had showtime and they... Netflix. I don't even think they have Netflix. Oh God. I, they're just so not big TV people. Mm. All they do is watch sports on television. And they're a PE teacher's it, son. It's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Are they? Athletes? And they're the two that are PE teachers. Wow. Well, one is now an admi administrator mm -hmm. in. Uh, he's a principal of a of a of a. I think not a high school, but just before that, like a junior high, mm -hmm. um, in Georgia. But the other one is a PE PE teacher, and I think all they care about is sports. sports. Yeah. Yeah. And, they're my brothers. I love them. They don't need to watch me work. Like, <laughs> I only want people to watch the work that I do who are into the work. Um, so if, if I don't, I would hate to, I never send out like to my friends and family. I stopped doing that a long time ago saying, guys, I'm on this show. Watch it. <laughs> like if the, you know that thing that Louise and I do every week. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we have, have never to, have to, we No, we, I did it. I oh, did we have to because we have to get people to watch. So we do it. We do it. <laughs> no, but uh, do you, but do you do it to your friends and family? I, I yes, I everybody. do it to everybody because because of trying to grow the thing. You yeah. Know, because no. it's because we don't have ABC behind us or Showtime behind us. Yeah. Yeah. We have to do it ourselves. And when you do your own projects, 
hopefully they'll go to those I have networks. To, I mean, I will have to push. And yeah. then my two brothers will be, yeah. If I write something and produce it and create it, they're going to be watching that. There you go. All right, so before we get to that, let's get to, okay, so, so you're doing musical theater, you're doing Singing in the Rain, which is crazy. You decide, you, you audition for college for theater. Yes. And yeah. you get in. I got into Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo for their theater program and then was in that for a year before I moved into the musical theater program because I realized I wasn't really interested in the behind the scenes stuff. I just wanted, and you know, part of the curriculum of the theater program yes. is you have to direct, you have mm -hmm. to produce, you have to do all backstage stuff. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not going to deal with curtains and like wardrobe, but like, it was, yeah, it was a little, I just wanted to perform. Right. And I knew with musical theater, I had, and I was comfortable with singing and dancing, mm -hmm. although I'd never really had any formal training. I just thought, you know what, I'm going to audition for that program and see if I get in. And I got in. So, uh, the so next. So, what kind of stuff were you doing there? Well, that's when I did Singing in the Rain. Oh, okay. You was did it in, college. in mm -hmm. during college. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then musicals. I don't even. What musicals did I do? do? I don't know. I have a handful that were. That's so long ago. The idea of like. I can remember every musical I did. I'm twice as old as she is. This is so <laughs> annoying. This is so annoying. <laughs> what was your favorite musical that you did? Um. I did some really weird. Thank you. Well, yeah. okay, so, so I did Fiddler on the Roof. I did the Mikado. I did Was that your favorite? South Pacific. I was Nellie Forbush in South Pacific. I think that I was mean, my favorite. Did you do the wash? But, yeah, I washed in a shower and my makeup ran and my mascara there ran. There was a on shower open, on stage? There was a shower with running water and I didn't know until opening That's night a, because they didn't have the water really running until opening night. <laughs> opening night, I'm out there singing Honey Bun and my makeup is all over my face and I don't know why. It's because when I washed that man right out of my hair, the makeup was... Was the water cold? You know, I don't remember the water. You I just don't remember had all those the, endorphins. Yeah, I, right, I'm, I'm taking a goddamn shower on the stage, and there's like, oh, I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. It's freezing. <laughs> I probably, I was probably too terrified to be frozen. I don't know. I actually, I wasn't terrified. I like loved it. Right when you're doing that stuff, it's like. You, you don't feel long. any pain. You don't feel any pain, and time just stops. You're just it in does. your element. Yeah, it does. It's wonderful. But yeah. we, after high school, I didn't do musicals anymore. But you kept doing them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it was part of the curriculum that I was learning, and um, and I. It was. It's great. We're talking about you know being afraid of of singing or performing in front of people. I remember getting. Like by the end of my um, my senior year in college, just being really fearless, and I I uh, it shows them what you I do. I miss that. <laughs> no, you are <laughs> you are say. you are so. I just you are so fearless. That is that is what makes Carol oh, wow. the most I'm essential that that character of comedy like that I've seen in a long time. You are totally <laughs> fearless. I cannot believe the shit you did as that character. And with, 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 with reckless <laughs> abandon. Funny. I mean, there's one scene, I, don't, I, don't, I hate to give spoilers, but there's one scene where she, she's doing the carol walk. She, they speed walk all the time. I speed walk every day, but I don't do the carol walk. But anyway, well, they're walking. Well, you know walking. where that came from? My where? mom. My mom learned how to speed walk in the 80s because she was part of the aerobics kick. And, you know, she was right. a mother of five, so she wanted to lose weight. Back when I was learning, I'm probably her mother's oh, age. Oh, yeah, shut, yes. shut yeah. face. <laughs> Anyways, she, she learned that it had to go, you have to go from, from ear to pocket or to, from cheek to cheek. <laughs> That's what they call it. I do, but, you, but yours wasn't quite like that. No, because I yours just thought... Yours was hysterical. I just thought that Carol would have, like, I just think Adopted that she's the type of person who would have taken a class. In walking, <laughs> just so that yeah. she could learn how to burn as many calories as possible. Okay. So she took a class. She had like a private class with some kind of guru, walking guru, <laughs> and he taught her to do that. But she turned it into like, okay, Go ahead, do like it. she does the. Well, that's this yeah, the is hands it's that thing. Does she that exercise? Thing. 
Huh? Prancer size? It's, it's a little prancer size. It, it is. It, it it's really hysterical. Is. Yeah. And then in one episode, somebody comes and takes her clothes off while she's doing it. And she's there. At the, and that was it. my one of my favorite scenes ever that to is, shoot. Because we... I mean, come on, that wasn't terrifying. I loved doing that oh because my God, you're an exhibitionist. I love this. Yeah, well, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I loved. I just think that's the funniest thing. It is the when funniest thing. When I read thing. that, for you know, they mm -hmm. give us all the scripts before we shoot anything because um, they've written all of it before we start shooting. Okay, I just read about this. Yeah, which so is so you so you're shooting. Out of order. Completely out of order. The entire season. Yeah. You're just running through. Yeah. So, so that, how long does it take to shoot the whole, se a whole so, season? Um, so with two months. Okay. Two months, give or take. Mm -hmm. And on all those hiking scenes, which you'll see one in episode one, one in episode five, oh, so one you in do episode them all? nine. Uh, we do it all in one day. Uh, so on that day, I had done like two other scenes from different previous episodes. Like I'd done the hiking one where me and Helen are kind of getting to know each other and we just slept with each other. And she comes <laughs> hiking with us and we're real cute to each other. And you know, Beverly, my best friend who's with us is like, what's going on with them? <laughs> because she doesn't know that we're sleeping together yet. But it's her boss, so she should have figured it out. So, so that's the scene we shot right before we shot the scene where she's like, I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> and she takes all my clothes off. But, <laughs> well, she doesn't take my clothes off. She demands her clothes because I borrowed her clothes. And so what was the weather so like? So she's when like, you give were... me my clothes. <laughs> what are broken up. Was... And I'm like, now? <laughs> and she, she says, yeah, I want it now. So I'm like, <laughs> crying. <laughs> It's, and uh, we're, we shot it in, uh, in Griffith Park, like right by the Hollywood Center. Okay, so now there are people around. Yeah, but they tried to make it as close to set as possible. And I had the, the little pasties on. And, so, and what's the weather like while you're taking It was one nice. Piece? It was oh. glorious. Oh, was, the sun was going down. It was just a nice breezy. Yeah, you could tell it's very breezy. Um, but... <laughs> But I just, I, yeah, it was terrifying to do. And I was like, do I look good? Do I look okay? Do I look all right? All right, this is my skin, it's like the same tone. But the, just to shoot, to like, it, it's so brilliantly written. And Unbelievable. I, I had so much fun freaking out with Tamsin Gregg, who plays Beverly. You two are fantastic together. She asked me before, she's like, what are you gonna do when you see Helen around the corner? And I was like, I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> and she goes, okay, because I I'll do whatever you do, but let's just you know let's. Yeah, does she know you're about so, to break up? I can't remember. Uh, I don't know. But this yeah. was Tamsin just asking me, like, okay. you know how? Because yeah, we yeah. both have to kind of freak out when uh -huh. we see this woman because we're getting surprised by her. Right. We don't. We think we're doing a very secret hike. Right. And, Tam <laughs> and Tamsin doesn't like. When she's around, they, yeah. they don't like get each along. other. Yeah, yeah. So th she's the reason why Helen is breaking up yeah, with yeah. me. It's very complicated. <laughs> Go watch the show. But yeah, so so she she asked, "What are you gonna do?" And I'm like, "I'm gonna freak out. I'm gonna jump all. I don't know. But let's just do. Let's mm -hmm. go crazy." Uh -huh. And as soon as Andrea Savage, who mm -hmm. plays Helen, mm -hmm. like, "Hello, girls." Mm -hmm. I, we just erupted, and we had so much fun, like screaming and jumping. <laughs> That even when the camera wasn't on us and they were doing the, her her coverage, we still kept doing it, <laughs> and we lost our voices, and it was just so much fun because oh, that's so fabulous. She's like a dream to work with, and I've never had as much chemistry with another human being as I have had with her. You guys were terrific together. Yeah, so so every scene that I had with her was like it felt like. I know it sounds corny, but it's like a gift. It's like mm -hmm. because they write so well, but she's also just a just a dream to work with. She's so smart and funny and giving and, and that relationship translated to the uh, on screen because it was because yeah, what so. you guys had together was very apparent. Yeah, I mean, it we, didn't feel in any way staged. See, we can't we can't stop going back to episodes. But what, all right, wait. <laughs> so before we get to episodes, let's let's go back. So you graduate from college. What happens? 
Yeah, so I do some musical theater in the in the Midwest okay. for a little while, mm -hmm. um, and then I like a repertory company kind of thing. Yeah, oh. like a, a rep company mm -hmm. for a little bit, and mm -hmm. then I decide, well, I got to either go to New York or I got to go to L.A. And, and I, what was your what was your dream initially? Was it to be a Broadway actress or was it to be on on film? I just wanted to work as okay. an actor. Okay. I think I le I was leaning towards film and television. Mm -hmm. Because it was in LA and it's warm there. <laughs> <laughs> and you grew up in Michigan. And I grew up in Michigan. Yeah. I didn't want to scrape my windshield or dig <laughs> snow. I was done with that. So yeah. the idea of living in LA and it being just warm there just sounded so inviting. And Had you been here? No. Never. No. And I moved. I, I My first time in LA was when I moved all my stuff. Wow. Out here to stay. And I'd never, I'd never lived anywhere else since then. So that was, that has to be 19, 20 years ago. Yeah, and it was, you know, it's culture shock. It was two years of me just acclimating to... Okay, so what, what was that like? What were you doing when you first got here? Did, were you, were, did you have a job? Hustling. No, I don't know. Uh, I had $3,000 that I had saved mm -hmm. and moved in with a friend of mine who had luckily come out uh, like a couple of months before me and mm -hmm. secured an apartment. So that was lovely because otherwise I would have been, you know, I don't know, in a hotel looking for an apartment and the apartment we were in was in Hollywood and it was in a not great... <laughs> 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 It was not great, yeah. but it was a roof over mm -hmm. our head, mm -hmm. and it was it was affordable, mm -hmm. kind of, mm -hmm. and and so then I just schlepped. I got backstage west out, and I was just you know circling and calling and sending out pictures and resumes and just trying and trying. And so, what's the first thing that took? So you never had to get like a day job. <laughs> Good question. Uh, no, I, no, 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 I did. Oh, you did. I was going to say, because that's too freaky a story if you never had to do a day I job. I had five years of day job. Okay. Yeah. What did you, what was your day job? Oh, uh, I worked at a sports club. I worked as a receptionist at a high-end um, company that, like, repaired and sold really high-end um, automobiles. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Uh, and uh, I worked at Merrill Lynch as a receptionist. Uh, okay, I wouldn't that was my last things. job, okay. and I was fired from Merrill Lynch the day that I quit because I was such a bad employee because I was starting to get work, commercial work. So how would you do, how would you do auditions when you had these like serious jobs? I lie. Oh. I mean, I came up with the worst things. Like at one point, at one point, I went into my manager's office and said. Um, my, my boyfriend has to have a procedure done. That's a very personal, um, I can't go into details because it's a very personal thing. So I need three days off because he, he won't be able to drive and I need to be able to take care of him. Meanwhile, he's, you know, there's n no procedure. And what there's was no the three day? What were the three days? A commercial for? shoot. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cause I got cast in a commercial yes. to sell Verizon phones. <laughs> A national. It well, it wasn't even national. <laughs> well, well it's still it was regional, but it still was, yeah. it was it was a paying gig yeah. as an actor, and that's all I wanted to do. Yeah. So, but I couldn't tell Merrill Lynch that no. that's what I was there for. Yeah. Um, because they thought you know when I had my interview, I was like, yeah, I came out here for acting, but I think that's kind of, that ship has sailed. So <laughs> I really am interested in finance. <laughs> Oh, no, yeah. not interested at all. Yeah. So uh, I was fired from that job the same day that I kind of brought my two week notice. This is a great story. So my biggest, the, the way into this business mm -hmm. where, you know, I think it's been about maybe 13 years that I've been working solely as an actor, which thank you mm -hmm. and all that. Um, I was working at Merrill Lynch kind of working here and there in commercials and I had just started working with a new manager who was, who was like, and it was pilot season. Mm -hmm. And things were, I was getting into rooms but I wasn't getting really necessarily cast yet in mm -hmm. anything. My boyfriend had just bought a house in uh, Highland Park, the, mm -hmm. the man I'm still with mm -hmm. now. Um, he bought a, bought a house and it kind of 
created a lot of social drama in our world in that How his, so? his best friend mm -hmm. had a girlfriend who was questioning his friend saying I can't believe Chris bought a house and is not asking Kathleen to move in with him that's so weird if so you, you guys didn't live together prior to no we didn't and I wasn't moving into his new house okay so uh, and the girlfriend was like if you bought a house would you ask me to move in and it created a big fight between him and and his girlfriend uh -huh. and so all of this stuff was happening and and Christopher had a friend who was a writer Thief mm -hmm. Sutton who ran um, uh, Cheers for a really long oh, time wow. and he was looking for things something to write mm -hmm. and Christopher was telling him about what was going on and that like I didn't know what was if what was happening with our relationship because he was making this big investment but it was just an investment it wasn't him trying to create a family mm -hmm. so so we were kind of weird too this is turning into a, a, a show. I feel well, this coming. he said, this sounds like a show. Can I write it? And Christopher said, yeah, go for it. Three weeks later, Fox picked up, bought the script, and wanted to make the pilot. Okay. And I was like, I need to audition yeah. for me <laughs> to play myself. <laughs> So luckily, the, my, my manager mm -hmm. got me in, and I did a good enough job that, that like, I went through the ranks. Uh -huh. And the funny thing is, is that his best friend was also an actor, too. Mm -hmm. But he was, he was auditioning to play the lead character. Which is your boyfriend. Yes. Yes. So we were kind of, like, coming up the ranks in the audition process to possibly work, uh, like... As a couple. Yeah, yes, as a couple. We go through the test, everything's great, and uh, I get a phone call, and they say, we love you, we want you to play yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's so So fantastic. I got the job to play myself. They call his best friend and say, we love you, but we don't think you're necessarily right for the lead. What do you think about playing the best friend? Oh, come, and they didn't know the story? No, they didn't know, and also That's the, casting, crazy. the casting director said, you know what, don't tell anybody in the studio or network that this is about your life, because they might not want to cast you in that then. Wow. So we, we both ended up playing ourselves in this pilot, and it was the job that allowed me to stop, stop doing a day what job. What was it called? Jack's House. Christopher's, you know, name is Christopher, but it was he was Jack and I was the girlfriend, and then his best friend played his friend. Oh my god! It's crazy. That and is crazy. It didn't get picked up. <laughs> but you got to make the pilot. But we got to make the pilot, and we got to play ourselves. That's and it was crazy. Really, really weird, and we got to work together. Like we had become friends. Uh -huh. uh, so it was, it was. So was the character as written? Was it you? There were parts of it that were similar to mm -hmm. me, but Fief didn't really know me at mm -hmm. all, the writer. Mm -hmm. So he wrote just kind of like what he thought, uh, kind of what he needed out of this character mm -hmm. to, be, to be. He he figured out what he wanted, um, and I just tried to embody that. But it wasn't it wasn't me necessarily. Right. She was like a real estate agent, and mm -hmm. it was just a really really great experience, but also. I, it, Mind blowing that, like, That's I was crazy. saying, I have to get in. I have to be able to audition to play myself. <laughs> like, who else is going to be able to do that? Wow. Can you imagine if they would have said, No, you're just wrong for the part? And they could have. They really could have. The girl who I tested against was fantastic and she works all the time. So. They could have easily gone with her, but they must have said, you know what, she seems really like in tune with this. <laughs> Maybe that's, you know, it was, uh, and then from then on, I was able to work as, as Okay, so what, so what, what was the progression of your, like, what was the first, <laughs> what was the first big thing? Episodes, really. Oh, well, episodes is huge. But, um, so I was the type of actress for about five or six, no, it must have been six years. No, but you had series before that. You had Till Death. You had Gary and Mary. N none that <laughs> I was the series regular. Mm -hmm. I had been recurring on a lot of shows uh -huh. prior to episodes. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a pilot every year. And I was either... <laughs> this is a great bit of... Great fact. 
fact is, it's not great for me, but it's an interesting fact, is okay. that every, sh every pilot that I've ever done um, either hasn't gotten picked up, or if it did get picked up, I was fired from. But that's very commonplace. I mean, first of all, <laughs> no, how, how, many, every single I mean, one, how many pilots get there picked up? three pilots that got picked up, and all three I was fired from. Oh, three. Don't say fired. They just went another way. Oh, <laughs> say fired. Oh. Never say go another way. <laughs> oh, my, really? Yeah, that feels always like you're just trying to hide the pain. Mm. It's just painful. It's an awful experience, but but I know it. <laughs> and I think, you know, I was fired the right from yeah. sh the show Rules of Engagement. Oh. They did a pilot of that, and they fired... Mm three of the five series regulars and I was one of the ones that were, was fired but but then two years later I got episodes and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I you stayed had, on rules right. of engagement mm -hmm. and I think that you know rules of engagement whatever that show was that was not the part for me mm -hmm. I think Carol was oh is so God. right down my alley and and those writers were really willing to to kind of um, ask me, like, the, to get to know me and to also, like, kind of feed into what I do best as an actor. So, um... Okay, so what was that process that like? How, how did that whole episode thing start? Like... Oh, well, it was... I was working on Till Death, mm -hmm. and I, um... Uh, uh, the audition came up, and I went in and met with David and Jeffrey, David Crane and Jeffrey Cleric, who are the writers, and they, they, I just, I sat down with them. The great thing was, is that Christopher, my partner, had just kind of started into, uh, you know, going from an actor to being a writer and a showrunner. Wow. Yeah, so he was working with network executives. What what was he the show? What show was he showing on? Uh, well, he is a, he right currently now he he's he's got a show called Marlin that's coming out for its second season next week, June fourteenth. Mm -hmm. So, um, and he's the showrunner creator of that show. And um, where how did he make the transition from actor to writer or show? He did a lot of he 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 sold a spec script that mm -hmm. he uh, wrote. Um, and they cast Macaulay Culkin in it and shot the pilot. Busy Phillips and Macaulay Culkin were in the pilot. It didn't get picked up to series, mm -hmm. but from then on, he basically wrote a pilot every season and has had a couple of shows that have been put on the air. One was called 100 Questions uh, for NBC. It didn't last uh, mm -hmm. past 10 episodes. And then a man up for ABC that didn't last past 10 mm -hmm. episodes. And uh, now Marlin, which is lasting into its second season. That's and hopefully it, you know, it keeps mm -hmm. going. So, um, so yeah, he's had, he's had years of, of doing this, but mm -hmm. this, he had just been starting to do this and this was 2010 when episodes started. Mm -hmm. And I remember him coming home with stories of like, you would not believe what these executives are saying they double talk they they act like your best friend but they're really kind of shooting you in the back or like it was it's it's so diabolical yeah. what what that experience is mm -hmm. for a writer or creator to deal with a network executive it's really interesting and it's a very strange relationship and I remember going in for episodes and um, and sitting down with David and Jeffrey, and they had written this thing, and they'd written this character, and I said... Did they have the whole first season written the out? The whole first season was written out, before they cast anyone save for Matt. I mean, right. they were, obviously was hanging on Matt. Right. But all of us came in and just, you know, we had to do what was on the page. And I think what they responded to most was the warmth that I brought mm -hmm. to the character. Mm -hmm. Because on the page, I think you can kind of, um, a network executive can come off, I, not I don't so know. Not warm. <laughs> not warm, but that's the beauty about them, mm -hmm. is that they really do, they, I think they believe they're really, they're your friend. Mm -hmm. Even though they'll screw you over in a heartbeat to get what they need for their company. So okay. it's a real interesting, um, they're almost like two people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they wrote as far as Carol goes.
because the two scenes that I had to audition for was the first one when I say, um, I say, we love your show, love your show. <laughs> Thing is, we need to get the guy to come over and test for it. <laughs> weird thing is, Merck has never really seen the show. <laughs> and so it's that character who's like, put on and like, guys, this is going to be so easy. We're best friends. We're all good. We've got a lingo going, everything. And then the other scene was the first time that me and Tamsin or Beverly get high together. Which is a, like, that's her personal life. So she's talking about how... Merck's wife went blind and now he can't leave her and it's really just shitty <laughs> and she's um, the mask is off it's two different characters right like it's this and like guys we love it and then it's just like mm. <laughs> so he's never gonna fucking leave her it's like a two it's these two and I was like I love this character because they're gonna just you know they're gonna do this, I'm sure, with this character where she just basically has to play two different parts. And I and I asked Which that, you did for five seasons. And I loved every minute of it because I love I love you know, I think people are like onions. Like there's layers and layers there. Of and you're only gonna see one layer when you first meet them, but the deeper you go, you get to see they're crazy, you get to see and that's the that's awesome. And it was it's such an interesting thing because Carol is gorgeous. Uh, the clo the clothes. Oh great, my god, great the wardrobe. the yeah. wardrobe is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean the clothes, every outfit is just one killer thing after yeah, another. They Fabulous. Did a good job. Fantastic. Yeah. So you, Carol looks perfect and behaves perfectly in those situations. And then she's this vulnerable mess. Broken. And she also feels like she's fat and gross <laughs> and like, nobody's going to love me. Who's going to love me? And she'll put up with anything just for a little bit of attention. Yeah, that was, yeah. That, that was... whole thing of her kind of being with a really kind of abusive boss was, that was an interesting, uh, you know, to go from Merck to this really... He crazy. was crazy. He guy. was crazy. And just to go, well, you know, and just to excuse some of the behavior. She just, she's just this, I, I always thought of her as this just really, 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 like, so in that audition, mm -hmm. that monologue of being high, I have to basically, the line is, uh, I just wish that some doctor somewhere could find a cure for that poor woman and give that poor woman her sight back <laughs> so he can fucking leave her. <laughs> and I think you would, a lot of people would read it like, I just wish that some, like, some doctor somewhere would fi find a cure so that he could fucking leave her. But I did it like really heartfelt. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what they responded to because mm -hmm. they were like, there should be warmth. There should be warmth to this, a lot this of warmth. current person yes. because she, it, there's something so awful. She's so manipulative. She's such a liar and she's so broken. The only thing that I think really kind of saves her and make people root for her is her warmth. Yes, absolutely. It's, and she just wants to be loved. I mean, in the end of the day, she just, she'll love anything <laughs> that loves her back. Yeah. And the great thing is, is she does she does find that you get to see her have that with her female boss, but she's also good at her job. She also no, knows I how love to do. That. She knows how to do her job. Yeah. That that's the thing that I loved about her too. Is that she should have ran the company yes, really and the fact that she isn't in you know she isn't the dumb blonde. She's yeah. actually very competent. Yeah. And capable, so yeah. that was really good too. Yeah, that they wrote her that way. I like that. They, they, and you brought that to it they too. They wrote a very dynamic character. I think she's amazing. It was very complicated, and I think I, I just that's it was it was such a pleasure to be able to play that. And it's gonna be hard. It's I don't know. It's been a couple of years now since episodes fi finished. Finish filming, yeah. And I it's gonna it's gonna be really hard for me to try and find something. And that's why I'm trying to develop my own material because, uh, you know, that's exciting. So what? What? Itself. So what are you doing in that regard? Um, <laughs> well, I started writing 
probably five or six years ago, specifically pilots for television, um, and and have shot obviously vehicles that you could star. In. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's the point? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I'd be fine too if I could just sell something and they wanted to cast somebody else in. It's it's a hustle, mm -hmm. uh, and I you know I I'm just starting to realize that. It's not any easier for an actor to try and like shift over to a uh, writer mm -hmm. creator. Mm -hmm. It's 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 just the same, more of the same. Just hustling and trying to sell and sell. But I'm willing to do that hustle, whereas I've kind of burnt out on the hustle for trying to get jobs as an actor. Really? A little bit, yeah. I I I'm just kind of sick of proving myself. That this business is. Unfortunately, the business, I think, tends to ask you to keep pr proving yourself mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been, you know, asked to audition for parts where, come on, guys, just look at the stuff that I've already done. Like, that should be the audition. Mm -hmm. And if it works, then just offer the job. It should, you know, and that happens in some instances. Mm -hmm. I've been lucky enough to be offered a couple of jobs like that. But, um, the hustle bothers me as an actor. So, uh, I, just because maybe I'm a little jaded at this point, I'm kind of like, what? I got like, I don't wanna. And it, it's, I, I'm not as excited about it, mm -hmm. going and auditioning for, and reading someone else's words. So what kind of stuff are you writing for yourself? Like what kind of characters are you writing Dark for yourself? Dark comedy. Mm -hmm. Cause I, and I also really love to do drama as well. So if I was going to do an hour long, it would have to be a light hour long. Mm -hmm. If I was going to do a comedy, it would have to be a dark one. Mm -hmm. I just like, uh, and also I'm a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. And I've always wanted to be, I'd always wanted to do combat as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, so my idea, I, ideal situation would be a light, a light drama with fighting. <laughs> And riding wow. horses because I love animals. <laughs> <laughs> and a little song. <laughs> Me as a little ditty, I just came up. Yeah. So, yeah, I want to do it all. Of I course. love that. But uh, I'd settle for just kind of constantly being passionate about what I am working so on. So, what's the. Okay, so this show is called The Road Taken, Kathleen. And the purpose oh. of this show. So the, pur the purpose of this show is to, um, I heard you doing a lot of accents. I saw you on Craig Ferguson. I watched a set that you did. And I can't. Doing... I get, when I get nervous or like have to be in front of anything, mm -hmm. I, the voice has come out. <laughs> you know, that was another thing too is in the second season of episodes. Mm -hmm. Because they had written the first season, we just kind of stuck to the script. Right. And the second season, uh, they sent us all the scripts. And before we started shooting anything, I started reading them. And it, like at one point, it said, you know, my, my line. And in parentheses, it said, in a voice. And then the line. And I was like, in a voice? What, is that? what does that mean? Because they know you. Yeah. Yeah, because they know you and they knew you'd do yeah, a voice. Yeah, I asked David. I was like, "What is what does this inner voice mean?" And he goes, "You know, like when you do your voices." <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first time I'd ever. I'd never known that I like I was the person I did voice. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that I did that. That's hysterical. They pointed that out. And now I can't. I like I I can't stop. It's, <laughs> So, so wait, all right, so no. I laugh all the time. That's a good thing. Well, it's a nervous laugh. There's a, yeah. a bit of a, which kind of can be, it's really hard for me to watch interviews back and stuff because I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> after everything I say. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, uh, and voices. No. No, it's good. It's, it's all good. And I think you should write it into all your characters. I, I do. So, so the audition process wearing down. So, okay, so this is called The Road Taken because yeah. the purpose of this show is to help people who are still trying to figure out how to merge creativity and commerce and how to do it and what your tools are. What, yeah. Like what works for you and what, what doesn't and like... It, has there been a secret to your success? Has there been something that's worked for you in the room that has helped you get the part, nail the job, 
is there a, is there something in your work ethic that helps you move forward? What do you think it is? How'd you get episodes? You know what? I will have to say that like I'm not great with rejection, but mm -hmm. I must be able to get over it relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. Because of like what I said, I've been fired from jobs that that can that can really uh, have it take a toll on your confidence. Absolutely. And I was fired from rules of engagement, and then by the end of the year, I went in and got another job on a on a lifetime pilot. Mm -hmm. And after the table read, was fired from that. In 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 one year, I was fired from two jobs, mm -hmm. and it never stopped me. That's I like. I either I have, you know, I don't have a great memory, <laughs> and maybe I forget, or I just have this kind of like uh, hope, or you know what it is when I see a role on paper uh -huh. or, or, uh, that's great, and I go, I know, I know how to do that, and I really want to shot at that, like. Uh, confidence level, nerves, anything that just doesn't get in the way. I mean, I feel them. Right, it's scary. Right. But once I get in the room and I have to do the work, mm -hmm. I can kind of. It just kind of all goes away, and I can. I. I. I can do my best work. How did you get episodes? How did that happen? Uh, I would. Well, it was an audition process. The mm -hmm. same thing. I went and auditioned for David and Jeffrey. They called me back, and they wanted me to audition in front of Matt because mm -hmm. he wanted to kind of see all of the pe potential mm -hmm. actors. And I remember being in the room with him, and the stakes were higher because I didn't. Well, okay. So what? He's playing somebody, playing himself, right? And he's kind of a jerk, but lovable. Now it's the real Matt LeBlanc. What is that like being in the room with the real Matt LeBlanc and you're doing this? Yeah, well, I mean, the stakes were high because on the on my way out of the first audition, mm -hmm. they told me, yeah, this is a series. It's not a pilot. It's going to be picked up and it's being shot in London in a couple of months. And I was like, I really want this job. I don't want to go to London. I want this job. And then they were like, they loved you, but Matt needs to see you, so can you come back and do what you did? And, and, and then I was just a ball of nerves. So nervous that like I started the audition, I started the first scene where I, you know, like we love, I love, <laughs> love the show, but I couldn't breathe. I was so nervous, um, and I was catching my breath, and the, the I was not doing a very good job. So I eventually just stopped the 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 scene. I said I gotta stop because I'm really nervous. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. I love that. So I'm really nervous. This is scary. I really want this job. So let's just, I'm going to just, and they're like, yeah, take your time, start on over. And then it went smoothly from mm -hmm. then on out. And he seemed lovely. I didn't really talk to him in the room very much. So he's just yeah. kind of sitting there watching. Just sitting there with a you know a room full of people, five mm -hmm. or six people. Did he smile? At, did he laugh in appropriate places? I don't know because okay. I was like, just get through it. Yeah, yeah. But it it went well enough mm -hmm. that they called me back for a test, and it was between me and this other woman. And uh, oh, I, and you knew that. Yeah, and I went in, and I was working on till death. <laughs> this is a. This is a terrible story, but I was working on Till Death that day mm -hmm. and had to like rush over to to Showtime, the mm -hmm. Showtime office to audition. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna once I get in the room, I'm just gonna I'm gonna uh, I have to kind of talk a little bit and have a conversation before I jump into acting because mm -hmm. I'll be so nervous. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll just have a conversation. I'll tell him what I was doing all day because it's a very funny thing that I was doing. And I was like. I walked in and I said, you know what? I just spent the day being handcuffed to Martin Mole, who was dressed as a priest and a little person. <laughs> and they were like, wait, wait so it was a, a three-way handcuff? And I went, yes! <laughs> and we just laughed and kind of, and that's a true story. I was really, Till Death got really weird. <laughs> I love Martin Mole so much. And I was with Fred Willard on Sunday, but... For which tonight, his show from 
a million years ago is yeah. like my favorite show of all time. I like I love Martin Mo. He's, oh my god. And he's a beautiful human oh, being. Oh, so good. And he's an artist. He's a beautiful artist too. So um I, yeah, that so was So you were handcuffed cool. to Martin Mo it and was. a little person. I was dressed as a cheerleader and he was dressed as a priest and we were we were handcuffed to a little person. <laughs> And uh, and that kind of cut the ice, and we were laughing about it, and everything was good. And then I went in and auditioned, and then left. And an hour later, they said you got the job, and I was like, "This is amazing because it's not just a pilot; it's a series. It's mm -hmm. seven episodes." And and then a month later, we were in London shooting. And did you know that all of it's shot in London? But wait a minute, you were just saying that you were in Griffith Park yeah, when there's you were doing... A, every season there's about maybe two weeks of exterior shots that we do in LA. But the, the rest of the series, um, two months of it, is shot in London. So we'd go to London, spend two months there shooting most of the interior stuff, uh -huh. and then come back to LA and, and finish it up and do the hiking scenes or the beach scenes or like certain scenes that they, you know, the, the Paramount studio scenes, they shot all the studio stuff uh -huh. at Paramount and so yeah. It's, so now are all the actors? Most of them are English. Wow. It's just me, Matt, um, and then a handful. Uh, uh, Mercea Monroe plays Morning, and, mm -hmm. and John Panko plays um, Merck. Um, oh, God, what's the woman's name? No, it's on. Like, wh uh, was, what? The, the one at the con who was head of comedy? Yeah. British. Daisy Haggard, one of the most amazing Have actresses. you seen her yet? Mm. She's fantastic. Oh, you did see her because she's the one. It's she hilarious. Is she? Oh, my God. Yeah. She is so... So funny. You know what's great about that is that they. She's British. I'm shocked. Yeah, and she's so talented. I'm so shocked. funny. So funny. She. Um. They left a laugh break in in that. It's a it's a it's a single camera, so uh -huh. there's never any laugh breaks. Uh -huh. But I re I noticed the last time I watched the first episode, is after she goes. Mm, it's hilarious. <laughs> she practically they left says a nothing. It's mostly just girl <laughs> it's, it's, noises. Yeah, it's, it's just the noises. Oh my god, she's yeah. so good. Yeah, so she told me when she was auditioning for the parts, she was on the tube going to the audition making faces, trying to think of people. <laughs> because it just says Myra Licht, a woman, it says the description was like, she's always making a face. <laughs> and she was just like, <laughs> Did she come up with those noises? Yeah. On, I mean, it's always written M, 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 like mm, or mm, 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 those kind of things, but she was the one who came up with So she walks in and she she remembers being on the subway or the tube and and making, like, mm, <laughs> trying to make the Myra face. Uh -huh. And. and and seeing people watching her and just noticing, oh, geez, what am I doing? <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, so, that character, when I, when she, in the first episode, when I saw her, I was like, okay, this is really silly. This isn't going to work for me. God. And I just fell deeper and deeper in love with her as she went on. She was just so funny. And every, every season, we would do a massive table read, meaning we would sit down and read nine scripts back to back to back. And, really? and she had always the biggest laughs throughout the entire mm. day so, and she would just go mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then people would just explode with laughter yeah those were really difficult because that's like five hours of oh reading my, that's how I watched it yeah. I watched it the way you guys read yeah. I watched it exactly that way Ooh. in one sitting every it was season exhausting wow I did and what would happen is if, like, you know, because I'd, I'd be flying from L.A. to London, uh, be there for a day, and then get in completely jet-lagged and, like, what time is it? I don't even know. And then have to go in and be funny for, for nine scripts, like, wow. for four and a half hours of doing Carol. And wow. It was, and just wanting to do a good job. Because the first, actually, the first table read that we had... There was a woman who was cast, talk about firing, um, there was a woman who was cast as Beverly Lincoln. Um, and she was she's great. The female, she's the woman she's writer. She's the female yeah. lead, yeah. the British female lead. Yeah, and she, she was um, she was great in the first episode. 
and then got a little looser and not so great. Oh. And it just kind of, you could feel the room turning and it just wasn't a good fit. And wow. at, we could tell by the end of the season, this is kind of a, not a weak link. She's a great actress, but it just wasn't a good fit. And they you shot her. the whole thing? No. Oh, they, oh. After the table read. Oh, 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 I see. She was replaced. I see. She was replaced with Tansen Gregg. I see. Who actually plays Beverly. Who is Lincoln, fantastic. Who's amazing. But she was, she, she came in the next day. Wow. Oh, wow. Audition, got the part, and then I think the next day had to shoot. <laughs> Wow. Had to start shooting. So it was a whirlwind for her. And, wow. And how much prep time did you have? Uh, before, well, I had the scripts a few mm. weeks before we mm. had the table read. Mm. And then I came back home to mm. LA for a month because I wasn't in it, any of the shots uh -huh. for the first month. It was, it was all Matt and, and Tamsin and mm. Steven mm -hmm. who play the three leads. Mm -hmm. And then they weren't going to get to any of the network offices until the next month. So I had a month off and then came back to London. So I had a plenty of time to prepare. So were there, what was the process like? Were there rehearsals or did you just like cameras rolling uh, or going? Really like any any television set, mm -hmm. there uh, we you just you show up and then you block and rehearse mm -hmm. as you go a mm -hmm. few times and then everybody's invited into the set to kind of all the lighting and all that stuff to watch what 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 we're going to do mm -hmm. and then the actors get sent away and then the lighting people get in with the lights and the and you know the set design and all that kind of stuff and they and they they make it look good mm -hmm. and then we come back and start shooting so it's really so quick you know gone girl was a crazy experience i was only in a two-page scene with okay. ben affleck on what that. was that like well, is he lovely? I mean, David, yes, he seemed lovely. I didn't really get to know him okay. very well. But, um, but David Fincher mm -hmm. is this, is wow. no, he's notorious for shooting a lot of uh, takes, mm -hmm. a lot of takes. And mm -hmm. I was kind of, I was told that by the actors. So I can't come in like a couple of weeks after they started filming. And some of the actors said, just so you know, David takes a lot of takes, so don't take it personally. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> He'll only need two with me. <laughs> but we started shooting, and it was just two pages. I'm not joking. For every setup, which is like my coverage, and then Ben's coverage, and then the two of us in a two-shot coverage, every that's three, maybe, setups. Right. Everyone we shot at least 20 times, 20 Whoa. takes. And in wow. television, you get maybe three, every three, maybe th between three to seven, if it's not going so well, you right. get seven maybe, but you never get anywhere past 10. And this guy was, he just like, okay, let's do it again. And I, I remember around Did the Did that seven, work for you? Was that a good thing or not? Well, the seventh or eighth take of the first f setup, mm. I was like, I'm gonna get fired. I know that I'm doing something wrong. Even though they told me he takes a lot right. of takes, I still thought that was like, I was doing something wrong. And then, you know, 15 in, you go, oh, this is just his process. <laughs> so you just you just go with it. And so now are you trying to do it differently every time or are you trying to hit it every the same way every time? I think there's probably a combination of both. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's, I don't know. I, I've never really kind of tried to dissect the, the way I act. Mm -hmm. Like to the point where I was like, I have to do it different every <laughs> single time because, you know, that's just who I am. I'm going to keep real. I, I, that would be great if I was that smart. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's a person inside mm -hmm. who's, who's vulnerable and wants to look good mm -hmm. and wants to please mm -hmm. and... It's really hard to to not listen to that sometimes, and mm -hmm. like, well, this worked that one time, so maybe I'll just try it again and recreate it. You, you, you it's hard. It's mm -hmm. hard to stay present and stay and, <laughs> and stay good. <laughs> it's hard. So, uh, uh, you, yeah, I mean, I, you know, my process is just. Um, my biggest thing that I do is I, ha I really learn to trust whatever the director and writer say. Mm -hmm. If they say they got it, 
and I'm feeling a little off or feeling questioning or not very confident, mm -hmm. I trust them because they're watching Good for you. Uh huh. Yeah, and it's their material yeah. and it's what they want. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I don't So care, you're not Dustin Hoffman, you're not going to say, can we please do that again? I really don't. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's to my demise. Maybe yeah. that's not a good thing. Maybe I should be more. Uh, uh, I, I'm. No, I think it's great that you're that way. I feel like I'm a hired, mm -hmm. hired hand. Mm -hmm. So uh, put me in whatever clothes you want. Put whatever makeup you want on me. Mm -hmm. Make me look whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, put me in a fat suit. Put mm -hmm. me like whatever you need. To, to make your vision come to life, mm -hmm. and ask me, I, I will do whatever note you need to you need me to do. Well, I don't, that sounds like somebody that you want in your on your set. I think some people do, mm -hmm. and then some people I think don't really know what they want. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is, I I think I aligned myself with David and Jeffrey, who knew exactly what they wanted mm -hmm. in episodes, mm -hmm. so it was a really good fit mm -hmm. and. And I was willing to go along for the ride, and they were willing to let me bring whatever I, I could to the role. And it was a great fit. Okay, so all the smoking, we, you smoke, I, I'm a marijuana addict, I haven't smoked in 17 years, but that was my, <laughs> drug, of, that was my drug of choice. You, you smoke a lot of pot in that show. So what, what, what are you doing there? It's really just a, the herbal... It's disgusting. It's horrible. That stuff <laughs> smells awful. I remember feeling sick. She again, smokes so much pot. In again, the show. all of the getting high scenes yeah. get shot on the same oh, and day. Uh, oh, yeah. So it's like a big full day of just <gasps> lighting up oh, and doing the thing. Uh -huh. That's at, and it's exhausting. <laughs> oh it's just God. as exhausting as the hiking for completely different reasons. Right. <laughs> oh my God, gross. But my favorite scenes, I think. I mean, I had to toss up between the hiking and the getting high scenes. The, yeah, they're both pretty fantastic. But yeah. to sit with, and her, she's the one who kind of taught me, well, she tried to teach me, because she knows how to hold the smoke in. Right. <laughs> I don't know how to do that, so smoke would just come out every time I said something. And I, st I started, like, when we started the weed thing, I started to do lines over the, <laughs> the holding it in. And um, they liked that, so they would kind of write towards it. But at one point in the last season, I couldn't, I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to smoke. Because I'm not a smoker. Right, right. <laughs> I've never smoked weed. I've never smoked cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't really know how to do it. So they had to kind of, they had to cut away. And then as, the, you know, <laughs> they were like, you did a take very a convincing puff, job. let it out, and then take another puff. And then, do, like, it was just a lot of smoke and mirrors, literally. <laughs> you, you did a very convincing <laughs> job. It was, a, it was like, oh, my God. It was just a nonstop weed fest. And I uh, loved that they would roll the longest, biggest fatties. Like, they were just so big. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's so crazy. So fun. So, so did you know, was there a, re did you know it was going to be five seasons? Like, what decided, okay, we're done? Like, oh, my God, you could have gone on forever. Uh, they did, the writers. Mm -hmm. They were done. Mm -hmm. And we were lucky to get five seasons mm -hmm. because I think by the, by the end of the fourth season, BBC, the BBC Two owns the show mm -hmm. along with Showtime, mm -hmm. and they could not come to a decision whether they were going to do a fifth season, whether they wanted it, whether Showtime wanted it. Um, so all of our contracts as the actors ran out, uh, and they just hustled and tried to put it together. That's why it's, it was two years since the fourth season aired from the fifth season. Mm -hmm. There was just a big lag time in mm -hmm. between, um, just trying to, f so we and almost Matt did. was already on Man With A Plan, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. So we almost mm -hmm. just didn't, we didn't, mm -hmm. almost didn't get to do it. Mm -hmm. um, which I think would have been such a shame because by the end of the fourth season, every character is totally screwed. Mm -hmm. Like, and in such a bad place. Mm -hmm. I mean, my character, for one, is, is it's so sad mm -hmm. what happens to mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. So if they didn't have the fifth season and they couldn't kind of redeem all of them and kind of put them in a different place or a better place, which I think I loved the way it ended. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people feel about it, but... Um, it's good. 
I liked it, it yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, um, it I just left me I wanting liked more. I, I, I could run them. I just, and, and, and me too. And, and somebody was saying on Facebook today that they should have spun you off. They should have totally spun you off. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, I'm David, Jeffrey. <laughs> they should spin Any you off. minute I'm yeah. ready for that spin off mm -hmm. because that would be crazy to watch her as a mother. <laughs> She, spoiler alert, yeah. she is pregnant. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, uh, yeah, that, um, it, we almost didn't have that fifth season. Mm -hmm. So that in and of itself, I'm just thankful that mm -hmm. they got to, we got to do it. We got to know that it was the end. Mm -hmm. So the last shot that me and uh, Tamsin uh, was, uh, the last scene that we shot was on the beach. Mm -hmm. And it, we just, they wrapped us and we just held each other and wept mm -hmm. because we weren't ever going to be these characters together Aww. again. Yeah. And you need to do that. We mm -hmm. didn't have that because it was so up in the air mm -hmm. in the fourth season. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm so glad that we got to do it mm -hmm. and I like the way they ended it. Mm -hmm. And so did your relationship through the years with Matt LeBlanc, did you, I don't, I don't know him. <laughs> That's so interesting. He's a lovely man, and I've seen him at all of the you know events that mm -hmm. Showtime has put on, mm -hmm. but literally in the five seasons we were together, his character and I, my character had four lines wow. between each other. I didn't even realize that. And it ended with him mm -hmm. saying, go F yourself, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, there was... Mm -hmm. We never worked together. Mm -hmm. Like we joked about how we were like, we needed to at some point get on a show where we actually worked together. Because <laughs> it would be nice to. Because I really appreciate his work. I respect mm -hmm. him as an actor. I've heard from the other actors that he's a dream to work with, and that he knows every, he knows his lines. He's very prepared. He's very smart. Mm -hmm. um, he knows how to turn a joke, and really knows how to. He knows timing really well, mm -hmm. and. Um, and he listens, mm -hmm. um, and I did. I did actually have a chemistry read with him for Man with a Plan. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, cool. Yeah, but I don't think that I look like his wife. <laughs> I didn't. I don't. I don't. They were like, I don't. She, that's not. She doesn't seem. Right. I didn't seem right for the role. Mm -hmm. And I think who they got is fantastic, mm -hmm. and they're they're lovely together. But um, but yeah, that would have been. We would have actually been working that's together. Right. That's <laughs> Crazy. And how about working with John Panko? How was that? Because he's so he's, funny. He's really, really, like, just a, a really lovely guy. Mm -hmm. And just a, easy to be around. Mm -hmm. And he just, he's, he's... He's so funny. And he plays a despicable character. And he's not, he's not... He's not into the business at all. He doesn't even live in LA. He lives mm. in New York. Mm. He's mostly a theater actor. Mm -hmm. um, he's just a. He, there's nothing Hollywood about him. Mm. He's really New York and very into it, Italian. Mm. He loves Italian food. He, he, I think he lives in Italy mm. some part of the mm. year. So, um, he's just really down to earth, really kind, and really funny, and just like always happy. Mm. Uh, which is annoying <laughs> at 6 a.m. Yeah. But, but I, he like, he keeps that, he, he's got so much energy and he kind of had to for that role because mm -hmm. there were, he fought, he had big fights with Matt in the finales of two of the seasons. Mm -hmm. So he was, you know, he was physical a mm -hmm. lot as mm -hmm. that role. <laughs> and physical with me. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, so he's a, he's a dynamo. He's a, he's a real, dynamic, lovely man. That's nice to hear. Yeah. So you have something in post-production I saw on IMDb. Something's coming out still? Is there? Yeah, what there's, is there? There, yeah there's something on there. <laughs> there's something coming out. I don't know what Good. it is. Um, so, so, and so now, so it's just straight up, this is my project. I'm going to sell it. Are you auditioning? Yeah. 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 Mm. Not much, but yeah. um, if it's a great, if it's a good script, then yeah. Can I will Christopher go in write you into Merlin? Merlin? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we, I don't think we really have the appetite to work with each other. Mm -hmm. I like, he, I love him and I love mm -hmm. what he writes and what, mm -hmm. and what he does, but mm -hmm. 
this business is so crappy and mm -hmm. the way that network television I, the way that they treat actors and he just was he's always been of the mindset I don't want my I don't want my my wife I mean for mm -hmm. uh, we're not married but we think 18 of years you get to call each other that. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's like I don't want I don't want to like I don't want to deal with what they might say about my wife or might not want to say about my wife because I'm in the room or like right. it's just better if we just keep it separate and thankfully we've both been able to get work without without each other's influence. And are you living in that house? No, we sold it. Oh, okay. <laughs> We did. We I eventually moved into the house okay. seven years later. Wow. Yeah. We're we on a very slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We uh, seven years later mm -hmm. we moved in. We were there for a few years, and now we live up in Altadena. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's no more Jack's house. <laughs> but it was such a cool. That was like I. That's an amazing. That was such a cool experience to go through that it was the it was a the, to get into the business was something that happened that was tied to me personally i love that is a weird way in mm -hmm. but it was it's a great story and maybe it'll happen again maybe one of your projects that'll go one of your projects will go i have no doubt and you'll get to play you again maybe yeah i, I mean you know. write you differently yeah yeah i'm thinking about a, a project that would that that is about my childhood mm -hmm. and I'm I'm perfect for the age of my mother Aww. so it would be really weird to play my mother <laughs> yeah. but I love that opportunity so hopefully that can kind of progress and turn into something I love it well Thanks. Kathleen Rose Perkins the rose is because there's IMDB there's another Kathleen Perkins yeah. so you had to do the Kathleen Rose but her significant other calls for Rose, which is so sweet. But uh, anyway, thank you so much for doing this. It's I my just adore, I'm telling you, I, I like fell in mad love with, I like tracked you down. <laughs> I like found you on Twitter, like the day I finished the show <laughs> and you said yes. And thank you so much That's for my saying pleasure. yes. This has been such a lovely, lovely experience. Thank you both. And thank, thank you, you, Louise. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. We're going to we're going on the road again, Louise. Road we're trip. on the road. We're going on a road trip. And the road we're gonna be, taken is going on the road. We're going on the road, and we're going to Stephen Bishop's house. <gasps> and he's about. Do you know the fish? <laughs> oh my God! He is amazing. Stephen. He is amazing. Stephen. He's gonna play for us. Right? He's gonna he's gonna play for us. Yeah. Fan. Oh, yeah. what is he gonna play? He's what gonna, is gonna, he gonna play, play on and on. He's gonna play them all. He's gonna play them all. He's gonna play. Yeah. So we'll see you next week on The Road Taken.